All right, so we are gonna make a helmet stand for free for that lonely boy over there. All right, so all of this is gonna be done in Blender. So first things first, we gotta set up the same properties so the measurements can come out properly. And while I'm at it, I'm going to address a mistake I made in the first helmet printing tutorial because I, I'm, I'm a poopy head. So with Blender booted up, we're gonna go into scene properties, going to go into units. And first things first, this is the mistake I made we never changed the unit scale. Oh my God, bro. So we're gonna change that to 0 0.001. And this ensures that all the in Blender measurements are the exact same as real world measurements. So there isn't any discrepancies when you import your model into your slicer. And with that taken care of, we're gonna go to length. We're gonna change that to millimeters or centimeters, whatever you want. That's what I'm used to. So now we're gonna right click the cube, press X, delete it. And if you want, you can also delete the camera and the light and you have a clean workspace. So from here, we're gonna import the helmet that you printed and you wanna create the stand for. So we're gonna go into file, import, and then STL. We're gonna find the files and here they all are. Hold shift, select all of them and import. And here you go, there's the helmet. And uh, if this happens where you scroll out and your helmet disappears, uh, not much of a problem. Just hit N, go into view and change the clip end to add another zero. And that should give your camera more view distance. So from here, you're gonna need the measurements from your actual helmet, so you can tailor your helmet stand to your helmet. So here's the beautiful helmet I'll be using a stand for. And here are some 3D printed calipers I got from Uncle Jesse. Link will be in the description. So you're gonna go ahead and select the measurement tool. You're gonna go ahead and hold shift and select all of these. And then you're gonna look at the furthest points of the helmet on the X axis. So that's gonna be from here to here. So right now it's at 189 millimeters. That's not our measurement. That's why we're going to be measuring. So we're going to be measuring the same way on the real helmet. So it's going to be on the tips of the ears, like so. And you're going to hold the calipers here and you're going to take that measurement. So we're going to measure that. And that's about seven and one eighth inches, which will pretty much convert to about 181 millimeters, something like that. So with the measurement noted down, we're going to hit S, scale it down a little bit, and then we're going to follow it with the ruler. And by the way, if you guys don't know how I got to this view, just hit one on your number pad and that's how you get there. So as you can tell, we kind of overshot it. So we're gonna scale it up a little bit and then we're gonna follow it. That's 183, scale it down a little bit. And there you go. That's pretty much the jackpot. So now this is where the fun begins. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna press Shift A, mesh, create a cylinder. We're gonna go into item, make sure it's centered. So we're gonna hit zero 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 and there you go it's centered now we're gonna scale it down around that much ah! this is pretty much gonna be the base so we're gonna hit tab go into edit view we're gonna go into faces mode select the top part hit alt s and scale it down like that somewhere around there is fine and we're gonna hit the bottom one alt s like so and the base might be a bit too big so we're gonna hold alt select the edge of the face right there and that selects the entire loop. And then we're gonna hit Alt S and size it down. Hit three, and that should be pretty good right there. Now we're gonna select the top face, hit E, right click, scale it around here. And that is going to be the main beam. Now we're gonna go to ghost mode, hit E again, raise it up around there should be fine. The beam might be a bit too thick, so we're gonna Exit ghost mode, hold alt, hit one of the edges, size it down a little bit, around there should be fine. Now we're gonna go back into ghost mode, select the top face, go into side view, hitting three, hit E again, raise it up till we reach about the roof, then hit S, that will be the support. Grab it, press Z, raise it up there. So as you can see, this is basically the thickness of the helmet. We're not breaching the surface. And over here on this edge, uh, it's inside of it. And we want this entire edge to be inside of the thickness of the helmet so that we can do something a little special later on called a boolean. So this looks pretty good. However, we're missing one more thing and that would be a chin rest because as you can tell, uh, Iron Man helmets tend to be uh, pretty front heavy. So we're gonna hit Shift A again, go cube, scale it down. And then we're gonna move it over here like so. We're gonna go to front view, make sure it's centered. And then we're gonna hit this face and this face. Hit Alt S, scale it up around there, and there you go. So now the first boolean is now gonna happen right here. So we're gonna hit tab, 
go into object mode. Then we're gonna select our helmet stand, go into modifier properties, add modifier, boolean. Then we're gonna grab the eyedropper and select the jaw. So now if I were to hide the jaw, H, you can see that there is a boolean made right there, perfectly tailored to your helmet's chin. So with the stand selected, we're gonna hit apply and there you go. And then we're gonna do one more boolean and with the stand selected again, we're gonna hit modifier, boolean one more time, hit the eyedropper and then this time we're gonna hit the dome. And now we're gonna hit apply and there you go. So now if I were to hide all of the helmet, you're gonna see that this top portion is perfectly curved to where the helmet rests as well as the chin area right here. And now your stand is ready to export. So we're gonna select it, hit file, export, STL, and then you can export it wherever you want. Uh, make sure to hit selection only because you only want to export your stand and not everything that's in your scene. So let's name it properly, helmet stand STL and export. And then from here, you can pull up your slicer. Now, the great part about this is that there is no fancy strategy on how you position your print. You just grab it from wherever you saved it and just slap it in there. And there you go. And All right, so uh, I just encountered an issue. So this isn't actually that big of a problem. What happened here is uh, something happened with the faces of the chin rest and uh, they're actually inverted. So what happens here is that as we go up, the chin rest is fine, but as we go back down, you're gonna see that there's support material and where there's support material, there's an empty space. So this little section where the chin rest intersects with the base, because of the inverted faces, it registers as an empty space. So in order to counteract that, we need to go back into Blender, select the base, hit tab for edit mode, hit A to select everything, and then shift N. There you go. Now we go out, hit tab, and then we can re-export it. So now that we exported the version two, we can go ahead and go back into prepare, right click it, delete, and then drag in the file again. And so now, as you can tell, there is a red uh, portion on the top parts of the helmet stand itself and they weren't here before so that must mean that the normals of the chin rest and the helmet stand are uh, kind of opposite so we're gonna go have to go back into blender again go into edit mode and this time we're gonna only select the helmet stand pressing L shift N and this time we're gonna hit inside on here right there we're gonna deselect hit tab get out and then now we're gonna export it one more time drag in the new one and there you go, it's all fixed. So now we can hit slice, go into preview. And so now if we double check the layers, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. Now if we hit here, there you go, no empty space. So we're good to go. And now you can start printing. Alrighty, so stand's pretty much finished. I think overall the stand looks pretty good. The curves and all the balloons came up fairly nicely. And if I put the helmet on the stand, there you go. Gets the job done. It may not be as extraordinary as like the other stands like you might buy on Etsy or other places, but for something that just gets the job done and it's super easy to make, I think this is really worth something. So yeah, so this is pretty much it. No fancy positioning, no assembly. Uh, you're pretty much good to go. However, there is one more thing and that pretty much brings us to oh Would you look at that a message from a sponsor, which is me So if you guys want something with a little more pizzazz and uh, looks a little fancier, I present to you My helmet stand this bad boy sports a nice Industrial design with piston beam bolt and gear designs and it also sports a little night plate emblem So you're sure to be turning heads with this display and like our helmet stand this has the mandated beam and chin rest so this pretty much gives the support your helmet needs. So yeah, if you guys want more info on my helmet stand, go ahead and check out my Instagram page. Link will be in the description. So yeah, if you guys want to find out how I made this uh, this beautiful helmet, go ahead and check out these two videos that are going to come out on this side. And if you want to check out my current Mark 42 project, there will be a playlist on this side. But yeah, I'm going to go to bed now. Good night.